All right, so uh, let me introduce you uh, to Dr. Dr. Christine is an associate dean, okay, um, of teaching and learning at the Faculty of Business and Law at Deakin University. All right, Christine is a chartered accountant who has worked for various roles before joining Deakin in 2015. All right, this role includes as an auditor in one of the big four, as both a financial and management accountant in a large corporation as well as consultant for many small businesses. Okay, so um, Christine, over to you. Thanks very much and welcome everyone. And thank you, Abdi, for the opportunity to speak uh, on this collaboration and the, the outcomes uh, and to say that it was a lot of fun and we've enjoyed the process. So I've got the, uh, the easy task today because I'm introducing what we did and why we did it. Uh, and Edwin's going to do the hard task of showing you uh, the underlying principles that were employed. So we're looking at R&D and we're looking at R&D particularly with a capital budgeting focus. So the key objectives of, of the module is to allow business students to apply the capital budgeting concepts to evaluate projects, to understand how successful versus unsuccessful R&D projects can affect corporate reporting, particularly taking an IFRS approach, and then looking at uh, uh, preparing the analysis using a spreadsheet. So also giving financial mod modeling tasks, uh, skill development. So why capital budgeting? Well, capital budgeting is really important. Uh, in all businesses, there's normally scarce funds to invest. So in most situations, there'll be more projects that are available for funding than funding available. So the, an analysis needs to be undertaken. So capital budgeting is a really important task for accountants and often also slips into a finance decision. And so capital budgeting is important skill for students to know. We chose to apply this to R&D because research and development has major impacts on the business. So once we invest our capital, or our funding, it's a long-term decision. It's really costly to change and difficult to change. And so far, yeah. so therefore it can have a, a large impact on future profitability. So if we don't get the capital budgeting decision right and invest in the right projects, then the for, uh, future performance of the business is going to be significantly impaired. So the module enables students to analyze a range of projects the analysis is done on Excel, so it developed Excel skills, and it allows, allows students to put some theory into practice. So what's always been done in class is that we give students little exercises where they look at one project and they work out whether this is a viable project or not. It's very divorced from reality. So what the, by putting uh, capital budgeting and in the R&D module into Monsoon Sim, we're allowing students to actually see the impact of, of the analysis that they do. So outside of the module, they would actually calculate which is a viable project from a number of different projects available. They then invest in the project they think gives the best return to the organisation. And then they get to see how this plays out in the future. And you know, because it's an R&D, uh, component or, or project that they're analysing, it actually has very fast implications on the profit and loss if a mistake is made in the analysis. So this is a really rich topic for educators because it enables us to look at uh, A, the Excel spreadsheet. It asks students to consider the impacts of different uh, cash flow financing options, you know, over the years, as you would in the real world. It enables conversations around discount rates that are appropriate for the various investments that can happen. And it also enables the development of an understanding of how we account for R&D under the international financial reporting standards. So this is the first part of a module that's being linked uh, to the intellectual capital integrated reporting, uh, which is a project that's still coming. And this of course links into uh, a focus of the International Reporting Council to look at how companies can value, create value in their organisation, looking not just at financial capitals, but looking across six different capitals. More of that to come in November. So when we look at research and development, research and development is also critical for an, a company's future. It's not good enough just to stay with what you've got. A company needs to continually evolve, evolve its products and or its processes. So Companies need to increase their R&D spending to make sure that they meet market pressures, the demand for new products or innovative 
um, approaches to, to um, factors in the marketplace. They need to be competitive. They've got to differentiate. So they need to be able to enhance their capability of the company uh, and it allows for future growth. So a successful R&D project contributes to the continued sustained financial performance of a business. So whether we're making uh, more sales, increasing profit, enabling a greater market share, uh, being seen in the marketplace, you know, it's, it's being of benefit to, to shareholders. So that if you have an innovative company that's coming up with new ideas, that you can actually see that the share price will really grow in that company and it gets a presence in the marketplace. It also can allow depending on what you invest in for productivity gains and help to reduce expenses in the organization. But of course, the problem with any R&D project is there is a lag between when the project starts and we start to realize our economic benefits. In practice, that can be over a number of years. Of course, in the terms of the simulation, we don't play for a number of years, we play for a number of days. And so if we've set the days where the analysis of the project takes place, 15 days after the actual investment is made. So students will have the opportunity uh, or be offered at the choice of the instructor or of a number of R&D projects. They need to analyze firstly, if they have the cash flow to invest in any of the projects. And if they do, which is the project that is best for them. So that requires analysis um, of the different characteristics of the projects available. They then commit to the project. And then after 15 days, they then determine, and the game determines whether this was a successful investment or not. And if it is successful, it means it's increased profitability for the organization moving forward. But if it's not a successful investment, it means the cost of those, that investment is going to hit the profit and loss immediately. So all R&D projects are risky. There's high failure rates. We see that in the marketplace and that's the, and that will depend on a number of uncertainties that happen in the market that can't be perceived. And in the simulation, there's a number of certainty, uncertainties around whether we've got a, you know, a really bullish or bearish market. And so there's factors that the uh, participants have to take into account. And so what we're trying to encourage is students to take a thoughtful, prudent approach to their project select, uh, selection and that they have a little bit of luck and that they also understand how capital budgeting supports the decisions made within an organization about its long-term future. Now, R&D, R&D is an important uh, uh, intangible asset under the International Accounting Standard number 38. So we have two components of this intangible asset. We have research and development. So when we're looking at research, we're really looking at um, an ex the, the expenditure on a potential project. So we're, we're seeking, investigating, searching for new uh, protect potential products or processes that's going to make our business uh, work better, sell more. And therefore, there is no guarantee at this stage that there's economic benefits. And because we don't have that understanding of the available economic benefits, it's hard to measure what the total costs of this will be. At this point, uh, expenditure is always recognised as an expense. So as we undertake expenditure on research type activities, they're an immediate hit to profit and reduce our profitability. In comparison, if you have a, a successful research project, you can move into the development aspect of, of the project. In the development stage, you actually know what you're going to or aiming to achieve. So it's a real project and you're applying your research finance, uh, findings to actually plan or design a module. So the development happens after the research phase has been completed, but before the production or use of um, the product or the process has started. And so at this stage, it's critical whether this is going to be successful or not. If this is not successful, all the development costs are also going to end up uh, in the profit and loss account as an expense. If it is successful, then the development expenditure is going to be an intangible asset in the statement of financial position or the balance sheet, and it's going to continue to provide benefits for the organisation over time. So there are six key conditions that must be satisfied before we can capitalise a development cost as an intangible asset. This is that it's going to be probable that we're going to get uh, economic benefits from the project, that we've got the capability and the intention to complete the project, and we've got the resources to be able to do that, 
that it's technically feasible and that we can reliably measure the expenditure. And so these indicators suggest whether the project's going to be successful and give us future economic benefits. So at this point, it's critical in, under the game as to whether your profit takes a huge hit or whether you move forward with your um, a profitable project. So all in all, this enables students to consider two key aspects of running a business, the capital budgeting aspect and the managing and decisions around research and development and the impact they can have on the long-term profitability of the business. And I'm going to hand over to Edwin. Thank you, Christine and Abdi, and good afternoon to everyone. So over the next few slides, I'm going to present how students can actually apply the capital budgeting concept, particularly the net present value method, and utilize the financial modeling function in Excel to efficiently determine um, the NPV of each uh, project and also to appraise each investment. And we will also demonstrate how a business financial performance and position will be affected differently by successful versus unsuccessful R&D. So hopefully this can give you some basic but clear understanding of how um, capital budgeting and R&D corporate reporting can be integrated into students' learning. So really, in Monsoon Sim, we have configured a number of R&D projects available for students, for students to choose from. And we actually assume that all these R&D projects are innovative, so they can help the business to distinguish themselves from competitors. But there are several fundamental questions. For example, whether these projects are equally profitable, whether these projects can generate economic benefits greater than costs in the long run. So we are taking a long-term perspective here. And whether teams should invest in all the R&D projects or can they actually invest in more than one R&D projects? So it's important to acknowledge that um, company has finite resources, so they have have to operate under the cash constraints. It is not possible for business to invest in every single R&D project, and particularly because R&D is costly and risky at the same time. And we know that the R&D spending is going to actually affect the company's financial performance and position directly. So for example, the R&D spending and outcome will affect the company's profitability, liquidity, asset, and equity base at the same time. So it has real implications on cash flows and profitability. Taking an example here, so if the R&D is unsuccessful, as Christine mentioned, for unsuccessful R&D, both research and development expenditure have to be expensed. So this will actually reduce the company's profitability. And if the R&D is not successful, it's not going to generate any cash inflows or sufficient cash inflows in the next few years for the business and the huge amount of cash spending will actually place the business into a very difficult situation because business may not be able to pay off their short-term debts, including loaned accounts payable and interest when they fall due. And some may actually breach the debt covenants imposed by banks and lenders because we know that banks and lenders always want companies to keep certain ratios, for example, the quick asset ratio, current ratio, and debt to asset ratio. So by taking all this into consideration, it is very important that students are highly prudent and selective when it comes to um, the R&D investments. So we actually want students to apply the concept of capital budgeting to appraise each project to see whether this project is worth investing or whether it should be rejected. So capital budgeting is a very powerful tool uh, when it comes to long-term business decisions that involve huge amount of cash spending. And we require students to actually conduct cost-benefit analysis for every project taking a long-term perspective. And amongst all the capital budgeting methods, we actually emphasize the use of the net present value, the NPV method, because this method is one of the most common methods used in practice and it is well taught in most business schools. So we have the common language and we allow students to actually apply what they have learned in accounting and business finance studies. And of course, in real life, there will be other techniques that are available such as average accounting return, payback or internal rate of return IRR that requires a very complicated interpolation technique, but those are not really the focus of, um, of our module. So we just focus on the net present value method to keep the learning more focused and manageable. So let's go through one example here. 
So let's see, for Project A, it incurs research expenditure of 350K and 450K for development expenditure. So the total cash outflow for Project A is 800K. Now, I need to reiterate that in Monsoon Sim, when we configure the, the game, we actually apply one very important assumption. So the time difference between the research expenditure and development expenditure is actually short. And we actually assume that uh, research and development activities take place at the early days of the game, at the investment date, which is at the early days of the game, so we don't discount these cash flows, okay? Because in Monsoon Sim, there are no year concepts. We set the game up to 130 days, 145 days, for example, for the learners to play, but there are no year concepts. So for simplicity reason, for the research and development expenditure, we do not discount them, okay? However, we need to discount the projected cash inflow that happened at the end of each year and subsequent years. So for example, for project A, if this project is successful and only if it is successful, we, an we anticipate that at the end of year one, it will bring an additional 200K of cash flows to the company, followed by 436K, 374K, 390K, 436K, 436K over the next few years. So what we want students to do is to calculate the NPV. So mathematically, how do we calculate NPV? That is basically just the total projected discounted cash inflows minus the total projected discounted cash outflows. And to calculate the present value of each cash flow, we need to rely on the formula that you will see on um, the bottom part of the left-hand side of the slide. So PV equals to C divided by one plus R to the nth power. So C is the cash flow for a particular period, and R is the discount rate, that is the rate of return. So for, for every project, okay, so we will apply the same discount rate in Monsoon C. So for project A, for example, we actually apply 15% required rate of return. So required rate of return is basically the minimum return um, that is required by investors to invest in a particular project, okay? And N is just the number of periods. So let's take the projected cash inflow, okay, let's discount the, the cash inflow at the end of year one. So it's given that it's 200K, so we just put 200K as the numerator, divided by one plus R. So 15% means 0 0.15. So one plus 0 0.15, you get 1.15 to the power of one. And you do the same thing for the second year cash flow, that is 436K, divided by 1.15 to the power of two. And then for year three, 374K um, divided by 1.15 to the power of three. And for year four, 390K divided by 1.15 to the power of four. And in year five, that is 436K divided by 1.15 to the power of five. And finally, 436K for year six divided by 1.15 to the power of six. Okay, so these are the total projected discounted cash inflows. And we deduct the total cash outflows, okay? And remember, for the total cash outflows, we do not discount here because we assume that they take place at the earlier days of the game. So there is no need to discount it for simplicity. So after you have plugged in all the figures, you find that the MPV for this project is actually half a million, 577K. Will you invest in this project? So basically you will, because the net benefit for investing in this project is actually positive. So it is a promising investment and you will consider this investment. And of course, it's going to be quite time consuming for students to calculate this manually. So we will recommend students to actually calculate this um, using the financial modeling function in Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to demonstrate how this can be done. So basically, what students need to do is you encourage students to pre-populate all the information for every single project. So here I have project A to E, let's say, and I will pre-populate the research expenditure and development expenditure for each project, and I will just sum them up, okay? And I will also pre-populate the projected cash inflows for every year, and I will also have a discount rate, which is 15% in this example. So once your students have actually pre-populated this information, they can calculate the MPV very quickly. So to do this, you can just type equals to MPV. So we will use the existing function, which is in view in Microsoft Excel. And then we open the brackets. We will choose the discount rate. 
And note, because we are using the same discount rate to evaluate, to appraise every project in this example, because we are using the same referencing point, we need to lock the cell. So to lock the cell, you can simply just add dollar sign. So dollar B, dollar 15, add, add the dollar sign to the row and column. Okay, so we lock the cell because we are using the same discount rate for every project. And for project A, I will choose cell B6 to B13. Okay, and you may actually ask, why do I choose up to uh, B13? Simply because I want to copy this formula across to other projects. Okay, so because if you have a look, project A actually has six years of cash inflows and project E actually has eight years of cash inflows. So to allow me to actually set up a modeling and copy the formula across efficiently, I would choose from B6 to B13. Okay, and of course, Excel is smart because once you leave these cells empty, they won't be incorporated in the calculation for project A, but they would do it for project E. Okay, so I will close the bracket. And here I get my MPV. Oh, sorry, I still have to minus the thing. I have to minus the total cash outflows. Okay, and remember, we don't, did, uh, we don't discount the total cash outflow in this case. So that gives me my net present value of half a million. So 577k, which is consistent with what we have calculated previously. Okay, so once you have made sure that the formula is correct, you can just drag the formula across and now you will see the MPV for each available project. So in this case, which project shall we invest? So if the business has a whole lot of cash, we will invest in project A, project C, and project E. Right, because they actually give us the positive MPV. But we would not actually invest in project B and project D because they have negative MPV. And for negative MPV in Monsoon Sim, we set them as failure. Okay, we set them as um, fail um, R&D. And of course, if the business has cash constraints, they cannot invest in more than one R&D. They have to go with the R&D project that gives the best MPV which is project E in this example, okay? So because project E has a greater positive MPV compared to project C and project A in this case. And of course, we can actually rely on this uh, spreadsheet to further configure and to see the implications uh, of- um, Edwin. Yes? Um, at the here, I don't, I don't think, uh, I, can you share your Excel? Because I think you, we are looking at your PowerPoint. Oh, is it? I'm so sorry. It's okay. Just, I think they, they get the picture, but uh, it's, it, it's good for them to have a look. Cool. Can you see my Excel now? Yes. Okay, excellent. Sorry, I'm just going to demo this uh, very quickly again. So what's happening is you will ask students to pre-populate uh, the information for each project, including the research expenditure and development expenditure, and all the projected cash inflows in, and the required rate of return. So once you already have all this information ready, you can just type the formula in Excel, which is equals to NPV, open bracket, and you will choose the discount rate. And because we are using the same discount rate for every single project, we will lock this cell. And to lock this cell, you can actually put a dollar sign to the row and column. So dollar B, dollar 15, for example, comma, and you will select the projected cash inflows. Okay, and here I select from B6 to B13. Okay. And I close the bracket. But this is not really the MPV because I still have to minus the total cash outflow, which is for the research and development expenditure, and that gives me 577k. So that is consistent with what we have calculated previously that is shown in the slide. Okay, so when you have made sure that this uh, formula is correct, you can just drag this formula across so you can efficiently determine the MPV for each project. And in this case, if the company has a whole lot of cash, they can invest in project E, project C and project A because they give the positive MPV. And you will avoid investing in project B and project D because they will, deem, they will be deemed as um, failed R&D, unsuccessful R&D given the negative MPV. And if the business has cash constraints, if they can only invest in one particular project, they will pick 
project B because that actually gives the best and the highest figure for uh, positive NPV. So based on this, we can uh, further configure how the project is going to affect the company's financial performance and position, how they're going to affect various items on profit and loss and balance sheet, okay? So for example, we can quote that, okay, to determine whether the project is successful, we can use the if function equals to if, and then we select the MPV that you have calculated just now, okay, and then comma. If this is successful, we give it one, and if it is unsuccessful, we give it zero. Okay, so we know that okay, project one is successful because it is positive, and then we just drag across. Okay, sorry, I have a type zero. Okay, so we will drag across this formula to the other cells. Oh, hang on. Oh, sorry, if V17 is greater than zero. Okay, so let me rectify the formula. So we type if equals to if open the bracket, okay, the MPV, if the MPV is greater than zero, then it is successful, which is coded one and zero otherwise, okay, so this gives you one and you drag across to the um, other columns, okay, so it will tell you that for project A, project C and project E, they are successful, but for project B and D, they are not successful, okay, now, what happens if the project is successful? If the project is successful, Monsoon Sim will reward the teams with some sort of cash flows and the cash inflows will equal to the projected cash inflow that are set for year one okay so in this case since project a is successful so if team invest in um, project a they will get an extra revenue of 200k 15 days later okay so to quote this we can use the if function okay if this is a successful project okay equals to one okay if the outcome equals to one means if it is successful then i will have an extra revenue so i refer to b6 that is the projected cash inflow in year one and zero otherwise because if it is unsuccessful i will not get any cash inflows okay so that's the way how it is configured in monsoon scene so here consistently i get my two hundred thousand dollars for project a and I'll get $200,000 for project C, and I'll get $250,000 for project E. But I will not get anything for project B and for project D because they are unsuccessful R&D, okay? Then when it comes to research expenditure, remember Christine mentioned that for all research expenditure, they must be expensed because it is too early to conclude that they are future economic benefits. So accounting standards require all research expenditure to be expensed, so here we can just simply equal to the research expenditure input. So I'll just click B2 and I press enter and I will just drag this information across. Okay, so for all these projects, this is the amount that must be expensed for the research expenditure. And we also have to consider the development expenditure and under IFRIS, the development expenditure is expense if it is not successful. If it fails to meet the six criteria mentioned by Christine and the extended, okay, so you have to expense them. So we can also use the, use the if function. So if the outcome equals to zero, meaning if it is not successful, then we will select the development expenditure. So I pick B3, that is the development expenditure for, a, uh, for project A and zero otherwise, okay? So if zero otherwise means if it is successful, we do not have to expense the development expenditure, okay? Now here you can see, because project A is successful, the development expenditure does not need to be expensed. It will be capitalized, it will be booked on balance sheet later, okay? So we can just drag this formula across. So you find that for project B, and for project D, because they are not successful, the development expenditure of 880K and 550K respectively are recorded here, okay? So we have looked at what happens to the company's P&L for successful versus unsuccessful R&D. Now we're going to look at the implications on the balance sheet. Now, when you invest in R&D, definitely there will be a cash reduction, okay, regardless of whether the R&D is successful or not, there will always be cash reduction. 
So that will equal to the sum of your research and development expenditure. Okay, so I pick B4 and I will just drag this across. Okay. And the next item will be the intangible asset account. Okay, so we have an account name called intangible dash development. That means if you see this, that means that okay, the RD that the team has chosen is successful. So the development expenditure of this project can be capitalized. So what we can do here is we also use the if function. If it is successful, if it is equals to one, then we will capitalize the development expenditure, which is B3 for project A and zero otherwise, meaning if it is not successful, we cannot capitalize the development expenditure. Okay, so that gives you 450K for project A because it is successful. Okay, and then we drag this formula across and we can see that for project C and for project E, because they are successful, their development expenditure are also recorded on balance sheet. But for project B and for project D, because they are unsuccessful, no development expenditure are actually um, recorded as an asset. Okay, and finally, if the project is successful, there will be extra cash inflow, there will be extra revenue. So that was simply equals to the sales revenue if it is successful. So equals to B21, and I will drag this formula across. Okay. So you find that there are really a lot of opportunities that you can consider, a lot of possibilities that you can consider in, in uh, designing your, your curriculum and also your assessments for the students by integrating the capital budgeting and R&D reporting decisions. Okay, so hopefully this gives you um, some basic and clear idea before Abdi actually demo the game. So now it is the fun part. I'll hand it over to Abdi. Okay, thank you, um, Edwin. Um, let me just uh, say a few words about Edwin. Edwin is the senior lecturer in Department of Accounting in Deakin Business School. Uh, Edwin is a CPA with a significant academic and a practical experience providing integrated teaching and research across a range of topics, including financial accounting, auditing, corporate governance, business strategy, and capital markets. And for this particular feature, um, I learned a lot from Edwin, I must say. Um, the spreadsheet that uh, he has shown earlier uh it started we, we you know we started with the with the with a model with a spreadsheet and finally end up in monsoon sim which uh, i'm really uh really happy to to show you now okay hello i'm here to introduce the concept of research and development investment in the context of intellectual capital for a company if you want to know more about the theory behind intellectual capital and R&D investment, please go to Active Guide and search for intellectual capital. And you will see two documents. The first one is the theory behind it. You can click and it will put up, pull up the uh, PowerPoint. This was uh, introduced by Dr. Christine Contessaro from Deakin University and Dr. Edwin Lim from the same university. This is a result of a collaboration between Monsoon Sim and Deakin. And if you go through this PowerPoint, you will see the theory behind the concept. Okay. And the importance in it as far as the education value that it can provide to the learners to your learners okay and that is the uh, theory and then if you like to know more you can click the uh, worksheet which will pull out the uh, calculation behind the determination of the uh, net present value of all the projects the r d projects that the student will be uh, asked to evaluate. Okay, so how are we going to and uh, how are we going to simulate all this in monsoon sim? So, and the answer is it can be done quite easily, and we have we are here to demonstrate how we're doing it. Okay, so first of all, in the finance menu, 
you should see a new submenu called R&D Development Allow. And you can read more about it here. Uh, I've turned it on. It's defaulted to be no, but now I've made it yes. So it is in play. So let's see what the student will see. So suppose I am Farsim. I'm going to click Farsim and open up Farsim's screen as a learner. If I go to my finance, I will see a new menu called R&D. By clicking this, then here's a story. And the story is that our CEO is looking to increase our future value by investing in R&D. Okay, so here's the context. Now, here are a few R&D projects being considered. So here are the projects. Okay. Your job is to make sure that we invest in a project that are projected to bring us the best return. Okay, so that's how we simulate this and that's how the learners learn by carefully selecting the project to invest in. Note, and this is important, a project with negative net present value will be deemed total failure and will be written off as expense. Okay, so here's the risk for the learners. They have to pick it carefully and the required rate of return currently is set at 50%. Okay, so here are the projects that is available that are available to the to the learners. Project A, B, C, D, E. Okay, project A could be you know invest in five G technology. Uh, project B could be you know invest in robotics, what something like that. Um, now for project A, there are two expenditure expenditure here, the research part and the development part. And they are two distinct components. Yeah? And the budgeted years, six years, and this project, once you have made the investment, it will be evaluated in 15 days, okay, based on the simulation in Monsoon City. So, what are the projected inflows? Okay, the inflows are $200, uh, sorry, 200000 200, uh, 400 on the second year, and so on, and so on, and so on. These are the projected inflows. So if you make the right choice, uh, then you will get a positive return in terms of net present value. If you make the wrong one, then you will risk being a total failing project and it will be totally written off by your CEO. So facing this, the, these choices, the student has to calculate the NPV. Okay, how to calculate? Then you should go back to the uh, worksheet that we talked about earlier. Okay, you can go through these two PowerPoint and you should understand the concept behind it. So, assuming that we're playing the game now and the students uh, were to, to make the choice, so let's run this game, okay? Right. So now I'm going to run the game. And I'm going to run a fast game. Uh, and I'm going to run for 30 days. Okay, so let's go. So the game is running. And these learners facing these choices. So let's say this learner picks uh, project B which is actually a failed project, okay, based on the net present value. Okay, we'll see how it is being set up later, okay, but for now, from the angle of the learner, uh, suppose he doesn't understand the concept well about the uh, calculation of return, and he pick it randomly, and then let's suppose he pick this project, project B, and then these are the outflow, research, and development, and he approves it, suppose, then he is incurring this much money for research. And after that, this much money for development. So let's take a look at the PL impact right now. So from the PL point of view, he has already incurred a research cost, a research expenses 
into the amount of 440,000, right? Which is as predicted here, 440,000. Okay? So then on 15 days, the learner has to wait for the evaluation by the CEO and see what happened. Okay? Now, if you go to the transaction list, now we are pending evaluation. It should be out by day 21. And let's see, okay, the outcome. In the meantime, let's consider, let's check out our balance sheet. Um, there's no intangible asset here, nothing. Okay, and everything looks quite normal. And again, the only impact so far we have is the research cost that's already being booked. All right, 440,000. Now let's see what happened to the 880,000, okay, on day 21. Now remember, I have chosen project B randomly, okay, and suppose I uh, assume that I don't know how to calculate the net present value, then I will be risking uh, a, a, a total loss because it may be a bad project. All right, so let's see. So now is day 15. Let's wait a few more days. Day 20. Day 21. Okay, let's see. Ah, okay. So the evaluation completes and it turns out that this looks like a bad project because the entire R&D, research and development, have been expensed. Okay, so I'm taking a big hit here, all right, because it's all expense and I do not have any intangible asset. Okay, nothing here. And I don't have any income. The inflow is all cancelled, it's all written off. Okay, so it's a failed project. That's because the net present value, if you calculate this based on this, is actually you see, based on this, is actually negative. Now, I'm going to pick project one, which I know has a positive uh, net present value based on the formula, okay, that if I, if, I, uh, if I go through the worksheet, I will learn the formula and I'll know, okay? So now I'm going to reset this particular uh, simulation. I'm going to go back to day one. But now I'm going to change something. I'm going to make the evaluation day quicker, all right? So instead of 15 days, I'm going to make it uh, 10 days. So it's quicker. All right. So that's the evaluation day. Now let's continue this, run this game again from day zero. This time, I'm going to select a positive net present value project, which, is, which I know is project A. Okay, I'll tell you how I know later, okay? But for now, trust me, I know that it is project A, so I'm gonna click this, invest in project A. Okay, so approve. So now, I will incur expense of the research part the following day after I made the, made the uh, commitment, commit to do the investment. So the research part 350 is in. Okay, that's the amount planned out here. Now let's wait until the evaluation day is complete, which is going to be day 14. All right, so approved day is three. The research fund is committed on day four, and now I'm waiting for the day 14, see what happened. Okay, so now day seven, day eight. Remember, the earlier example that I used, I used project B, and I ended up expensing both the research part and the development part, and I did not get any tangible asset because it was failed project. Day 14, there you go. Okay, so you completed. All right, the development fund has been committed, day 14. And where does the development go? Based on the IFRS 
um, practice, the development is now considered development an intangible asset. Okay, it's not expense. So if I look at my expense, I should uh, in my profit and loss, I should only incur the research cost. The development cost now is ended up as my asset. Okay, there you go. And not only that, my expected inflow should come in, right? There should be an expected inflow, which is this, this guy right here, first year income, 200,000 should be in my profit and loss also, okay? So not only I have um, successfully um, uh, build up some intang intangible asset, uh, I also start to enjoy the return, okay, the first year return. So if you compare by my net profit from the earlier one, then it is uh, a whole lot better because of, and not only from a PNL point of view, and also, but also from the balance sheet point of view, okay? because of this intangible asset. Now, as a teacher, then you may say, okay, so how do I determine the net profit value if I'm a teacher, right? I don't have time to calculate all this, so it's easy. Uh, if you come to your menu, if you click this, you go to the R&D, right? Here are the setup for project one, project two, project three, project four, project five. Right, the title of the project, you can change this. Okay, now here's the NPV. It's actually hidden because you might not want to show it to the student. So if you click here, it is actually positive NPV, and this one is negative NPV, and this is positive, and this is negative. Right, if you want to change this, it's easy. Just reset the game to day zero. Okay. So let's say you want to change this the next time around. You want to make it uh, more dynamic. You want to uh, uh, let the student uh, recalculate everything. Easy. Just come here. Well, first of all, determine whether you want your return to be 15 or 10% or 20. Up to you. Say I want to be 10, 10%. 10 That's right. So now the NPV has changed. Now suppose I want to edit this. Then I say, okay, I want, to re you know, I want it to be 380,000. I want it to be five year, and my first year, what I want it to be three hundred thousand, and then subsequently I want it to be increased or decreased by whatever. So let's say I pick decrease by ten percent, and then that's my NPV. Okay, so it's still positive, hundred eighty thousand. Okay, so you can freely change this, and then the student will then uh, be presented with a new value. Of course, we don't share the uh, net, net NPV here because they have to do their calculation and that's where they learn, yeah? So as a teacher, we have already done it for you. You can, all you have to do is just click and take a peek here. All right, now, so that is to cover the teacher's part and then the student part. Now, next question is, how are we going to incentivize the student to, to invest in um, R&D? Okay, one of the ways to incentivize them in a game is to set up a scoring matrix that involve intangible asset. So why don't you just click to uh, come here. Let's say you set up a uh, finance and you say, okay, I want that profit, but I also want to look at your intangible development asset. Okay, so that is my KPI. So once you set that, let's say 50%, 50%, then obviously, uh, okay, it's not so. Once you do that, then the student will be uh, incentivized to do the R and D investment. Otherwise, they are not going to get any point for this, right? Or if they pick the wrong project, which will be written off, that's even worse. Okay, so here's where the gamification parts come in, right? To make it to simulate the, uh, the competitiveness and also to make it, uh, the, to gamify the entire uh, learning process. All right, so I, um, in summary, we have, and in, we have actually uh, simulate the entire uh, concept that is discussed in these two particular 
theory, a uh, PowerPoint, we have uh, uh, and encapsulate in monsoon sim in this simple simulation. Okay, I hope you uh, see the value of the uh, of the, the the new feature. I hope you can use it in your class in your curriculum. And I'm sure from now on, teaching NPV value and teaching investment uh, in R&D would be very, very simple and easy. Thank you.